Hello, it's Classy here, back to another tribe video, and today I'll be doing some updates to my Abyss Guide videos from the past. So obviously, every other two weeks, there'll be a banner with an Abyss event, and it's important for getting frags and other awards. Now, it's definitely more important if you actually pulled the banner unit during that time, but sometimes the secondary unit has frags that you need as well. So I'll be going through some tips and tricks in order to maximize your abyss clears and get you as far as possible. And right now there are up to 40 floors and depending on how much power you have, you might be capped off. But for people around 600,000, five, like 500,000, 600,000, you can get pretty far if you have the good units. Like I can get to B38 and B40, I haven't really tested yet, but Maybe I can do it one day. For now, I'll just be showing off the main strategy we're going to use. So the first thing you want to do is on day one, you're going to start at floor one. It's going to be really easy. So you can just um, use, you know, the abyss team that I'm going to show later. You can just use it all the way through, get as far as you can. And you don't need to worry about building up your tribe gauge with the fodder team. But after day one, after you've got as far as you can on day one, before losing your units, uh, if you do, you know, the best case scenario is that you just get all the way through to your goal without losing any of your main Abyss team units. But if you do, you're going to have to use the fodder team. So fodder team is basically just using your worst units that you don't need to use for other purposes. You just put them into one team and you just send them in to build up your tribe gauge. This is because your tribe gauge resets to zero bars um, after the first day. Now for your fodder team, one way to ensure that you can max your tribe gauge to full with only one team is that you can add some tribe gauge boosters in that team. So there's going to be Jiraiya, T Jiraiya, um, Choji you can use also. And for the third tribe gauge booster, Sakura Blossom, you want to keep her for your actual main team, so you don't want to use her for the fodder team. If you have Hashirama or even like that new Naruto, there are some other options as well. But just make sure that you're putting in your weak units and not to waste uh, your strong units. It's also important to notice that when you send in a fodder team, you're going to build up the opposing units is Chakra Bars and Tribe Gage as well. So that's why you want to try to get it done in one team. After you have filled up your tribe gauge, you're ready to build your actual Abyss team, which I'm going to do live right now. So something to keep in mind is the tribe special that you want to use. Our strategy revolves around building a team that can survive very long and repeatedly using a tribe special to hit the opposing units one by one and eventually just start killing them off. The two best ones that you can use for this right now are Path to Hokage and Commander Pebby, although there are some other options as well. So make sure to uh, awaken and enhance if possible after choosing whichever tribe you want to use, and you can do that here. I'm using Commander Pebby just because I have all these units built up really far, and as you can see from the effects, it boosts all allies attack permanently, boosts guard rate by a lot, um, and guard damage reduction rate by a lot for the three characters in the tribe itself. And that's important because we don't want any of them to die throughout our abyss run. The other good one is Path to Hokage, which involves three Nartos. This one's great because you can stun them uh, if you don't kill whoever you target. It also um, boosts all allies damage increase rate and damage reduction rate permanently. So also really good and can help your units survive as well as dishing out good damage. Now, these are the two very best ones. There are some other options as well. Just make sure that it's going to be a three man, does good damage, and it can boost defense with some stacking effects, which means you wanna have permanent stacking effects. And also offensive stacking effects works great too. But it's not going to be too hard to use these two for now. So there we go, I've chosen to use Commander of Heavy, and now we have to think about where to place everyone. 
for Abyss, the rotations are not perfect. So you'll never start with, you know, like the Force Cell all together and then Sphere Cell together like FG. So that's why it's not too important. You just want to pick which units to put in which cell based on the bonuses. So for example, I put my tribe in the spirit cell for these guys. Let's see, sweet get you. And the reason is I want to actually put my Sakura Blossom in the fourth cell if I can, along with my Satan Uchiraya. So Sakura Blossom is a unit that builds up tribe gauge and heals, which is really important for our strategy because we want to keep hitting them with tribes over and over. So this really helps. She also provides chakra as well, and that's never a bad thing. So that's why we want to put her in force because she can actually heal more as she scales off the attack bonus. Commander of Heavy also boosts uh, all allies attack permanently, as we read earlier. So that also helps her scale as well. KCM is also a super important unit, and we already know this. He's good for pretty much every mode in this game, so make sure to put him in there if you can. Um, but if you're using the Path to Okage tribe, you can just put all three of them in force instead. Now we can actually run a second healer. We can run T Sakura as well. She boosts defense and also heals. So it's kind of similar, but I like her heal better than Tsunade's. Um, because it's just better for Abyss, as Tsunade boosts uh, attack Shinobi, I think, and she just boosts defense in general for all Shinobi. We can take a closer look into these units after I build a team. Uh, I just removed, yeah, okay. Kinaruto, you want to put in here as well. He's just a really great tank overall, and there are also some other great tanky options if you have them, like B version 2, it's really great seen people use the other tanks like Asuma and such and such but for now since my account doesn't have these units upgraded too much I'm not going to use them I've tried using modern abyss actually and it's been pretty successful so might as well try that out again and most people you can just put you know another tank here you could consider a support unit like a T Datera but it's probably not the best idea I'd just prefer another tanky unit here my modder is actually pretty tanky, so I'm just going to put him here for now. So this is just like some sample team for Abyss, and I'm just going through my reasoning of why I built it like this. So now we can take a look uh, at the units themselves, especially the two Sakuras, because people don't always think about using Sakura in this game. So this is T Sakura. And yeah, she recovers uh, allies HP, scaling off of attack and boosts defense. So that's really great. It helps your team survive. And for her fourth skill, she also boosts uh, allies HP and defense again. And then also damage structure rate from the LB2. So very good defensive unit. On the other hand, Tsunade, I use her for Ninja World Tournament instead, but she provides Chakra for attack Shinobi only, and as you see um, in our team, we don't have like any attack Shinobi at all besides KCM, so not very useful here, and the, the healing isn't as good. And she increases Chakra, which is great, but um, I feel like Sakura is just better overall. She can also boost healing and critical rate, so not that important. Now, the most important Sakura is this one that you always want to use. She increases ally tribe gauge and heals, allowing you to try more often. And then her fourth skill gives Chakra, boosts damage reduction rate, and also increases uh, ally Chakra even more after you lose an ally. Now, hopefully you won't be losing any allies, but if you do end up losing an ally, just make sure it's not one of the most important characters. So in this case, I wouldn't really mind using uh, the Madra, the SMJ, uh, as long as I have better replacements. Obviously, the Spirit Cell you want to protect, the Healers you want to protect, KCM is super OP, so you want to keep them. And yeah, 
that should be a pretty quick guide update. And the strategy works very well. You can probably get through most of the Laboratory of the Abyss on day one if you just use this strat all the way through. Don't even need to worry about fodder teams and you just um, keep playing. It will take a while, but you can definitely do it. And you might need to do some resets as well. So make sure it's worth it. Um, AKA pulling the units and uh, not having the secondary unit like I do right now. Also, you could use this for Tower of Eternity to get more Eternity coins, Shino coins, and some other miscellaneous rewards. So that's about it. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.